Hello, how are you doing? As you may know, I have been following the Booker Prize this year, and now I have read all 13 novels on the long list, which doesn't always happen. I mean, I follow the, the prize every year, but I don't always read all of the long list, and I don't always read all of the short list. But something just drew me to these books, and, and I wanted to experience them for myself. I mean, there was the initial knee-jerk reaction after the announcement of the long list of, of some people criticized it, saying, oh, what a boring list of books. And I sort of wanted to respond saying, well, have you actually read all of them? Because uh, now that I've read all of them, I really enjoyed almost all of these books and certainly got something out of them. And, and I'm glad I, I read them and experienced them and have lots of thoughts about them. So I'm going to go through and give my predictions and thoughts about what might be on this year's shortlist, um, which will be announced on September 14th. And I'm not going to go into detail about all of these novels because I've talked about a lot of them before. Um, so I'll put links in the description below to my full reviews of of all these books if you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts about them and I'd love to hear what you think about any of these individual books and also what you think is going to be on this year's shortlist whether you've read some or all or, or even none of, of these books it'd be interesting to hear your opinions just because it's fun to bet and think about things like this but I mean first off looking at the, the list as a whole it's obviously each book is about very different subject matter and written in in a different style and encompass different themes. Um, but looking at them as, as a whole, you can see some interesting common themes and, and overlaps um, between the different books. And, and I just love how this gives you a wide ranging like point of view about a whole number of, of issues and stories and uh, yeah, and points of view. And, and, uh, and that's just something I enjoy reading so much about book prizes and and that it gets you to really think more in depth uh, about the subject matter of books where there's some overlap. And uh, looking at all these books, I mean, there, there's definitely uh, different things about, about family and the way family units are composed and there can be infighting between families and they break apart and come together. They can support each other or tear each other apart. There's also really interestingly uh, a lot of different things about racism and racial injustice, which are are explored in a number of different ways in books um, from Light Perpetual uh, to uh, China Room and the, the Sweetness of Water in America and the, the Fortune Men, um, looking at a particular period of, of history in uh, the United Kingdom and uh, also looking at uh, South Africa from the points of view of two different authors. Um, one author, uh, Damien Galga, writing in the, the Promise about a span of period of time in South African history and, and following changes in South African society over a very particular period of time, but also within a particular family and looking at racism very much from within a white perspective and within the narrative sort of trapping you within that perspective. And then in Karen Jennings' novel, An Island, of looking at it from a very different perspective of, uh, of xenophobia and someone isolated on an island island finding after many changes in society that he can't be a part of society anymore. And though I think both of these books are really strong and really effective in what they, they want to do, I can't help getting hung up on the fact that these are both white South African writers uh, writing about racism and xenophobia. And so it, it feels like in a way we're only getting one side of the story and this isn't about being woke or like me trying to like make a, a statement but it's just to, to really understand an issue I think you need to see it from different points of view and and so even though like I said both these books are are great I, I, like it's still only getting one side of the story and I don't think it's the the author's fault and I don't think it's the the book prize's fault probably because um, there there aren't that many uh, books by black South African writers that are published 
published in the UK. And, and so I actively went to try to find out more of about current black South African writing. And um, coincidentally, Book Riot on their website, they posted a list of um, some of the most influential books by black South African writers writing about race. So I'll put a link to that list below uh, if you want to look this up yourself. Um, I hadn't read any of these authors except for uh, Kopano Matlawa, uh, her novel Evening Primrose, which was published a few years ago here in the, the UK and in South Africa. It was published under a different title um, called Period Pain. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, this book. Um, interestingly, it also explores xenophobia um, from a really interesting perspective, um, like uh, Karen Jennings does in her novel An Island. But to get back to the Booker Prize books, um, I also noticed some really interesting commonalities between the, the novels and um, some like striking similarities between the way these different novels would approach things, but from a very different angle and from very different stories. So uh, if you look at the novels Light Perpetual and China Room, uh, both novels begin with this very self-conscious discussion about the nature of time and the present moment. And it just seems like such an interesting coincidence that uh, both these novels, which are very different from each other, would approach this same subject. Also looking at the structures of, of particular novels, you can look at Great Circle and China Room and see that they both have dual narratives that move between the past and the present continuously uh, throughout the novel um, to give this really interesting perspective on the past and time and the meaning of history. Both Clara and the Sun and Bewilderment uh, use elements of science fiction in their narratives um, to, to tell their stories, although don't call them science fiction because real science fiction aficionados um, have, take real issues with uh, these books being called science fiction. And so Clara and the Sun, um, it's told from the point of view of an artificial being and so seeing the world through her eyes um, and reading it from our human perspective, we obviously have very different thoughts and feelings about this than Clara herself has. And in Bewilderment, Richard Powers um, has sections of the book where he goes to other planets. He, um, the, the narrator and his son, um, imaginatively travel to other planets to imagine how other life forms might have evolved over time, given the specific conditions of the, the that planet and their solar system and, and how that would work. And so I thought that was really unique uh, element between these two different books. With The Sweetness of Water and Fortune Men, you have two different historical novels talking about different period of times in different countries history and the racial injustice which occurred within uh, particular communities. Um, so in The Sweetness of Water taking place immediately after the Civil War and uh, two freed black brothers trying to integrate into a uh, family and, and a larger community. And with the, the Fortune Men, a Somali man is accused of a, a crime that he didn't commit. And so the fallout um, for him and his family uh, because of that. The novels uh, Town Called Solace and The Promise, you both have instances of families that deny the truth of a situation and then the destructive consequences of that within the, the family unit. And looking at both these novels, I noticed that just coincidentally, they're both published by Chateau and Windus. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, how that occurs in a Town Called Solace with a, a girl that um, isn't told the the, the truth about what happened to her neighbor and um, and so and so she's making her own assumptions about that and that causes a lot of complications and then in the promise about how an inheritance is denied uh, to someone that works for that family over a long period of, of time and how that continuous denial over over time causes really destructive consequences within the family and for the individual and her family um, who this uh, house was meant to be left to. With an island in second place, you get instances of individuals who try to live apart from society and who fail. Uh, so in island, you have an instance of a man who's literally living on an island on his own apart from anyone else. But then people come to that island and he finds that you know, he can't remove himself from society in that way. And in second place, you have an instance of a very uh, damaged woman um, who lives 
on a family house. I'm very removed from society, but uh, then when an artist comes to stay, um, she and hoping that this will have a positive effect on her life, finds that it has the complete opposite. And also in Great Circle and the Sweetness of Water, you have instances within these larger stories where an individual will find great solace in having these moments of solitude in very particular locations. Uh, so like in Great Circle, um, where a, a pilot, she finds that when she's flying in the sky, she finds this freedom um, from the expectations of the society around her and just being there on her own. And in The Sweetness of Water, you have a man who has been much abused and, um, and really horrifically treated. And he finds these wonderful moments of of solace uh, going to a pond and being out in nature and just removed from everyone else and, and finds such strength in that. And, and I found that so striking about both of these novels. And so yeah, just thinking about commonalities between these different books and comparing them to each other, I just think is such an interesting thing to do, you know, reading them within the context of a book prize. Okay, now I'll get into my rankings of the books. So the, the three which come at the bottom of the pile for me would be these three novels and, uh, and especially Rachel Cusk's novel, which if I was gonna be catty about it, I would say, I wouldn't call this novel second place, I would call it last place. <laughs> but I, I, I won't say that because I did actually enjoy lots of elements of this book, the actual reading experience of it, and w took out lots of quotes and stuff. And, and so there are elements of it that I thought were really interesting. And I know after my last reading wrap up, when I talked about it, I got some responses from people that said they really enjoyed it and really strongly connected with it. And I, I think that's great. But for me personally, it just really didn't work for me. And the more I thought about it, the more annoyed I got with this, this novel and, and what she does and, and how I think a lot of the things she says in it just don't have the, the resonance that I think were intended to have. And then next um, would be No One Is Talking About This, which just didn't entirely work for me, which I've talked about before, the, the second half of the novel in particular, even though I know a, a lot of other people found it really effective. And then finally with The Sweetness of Water, I there were moments of this story and certain characters which I thought were really strong and interesting and, and like I talked about before that yeah just really beautiful moments and some of the characterization but the the story as a whole just felt too controlled and manufactured to me to, to really work very effectively. So the next group of books that would come in the middle of the pack would for me uh, would be these books, um, A Passage North, which I, I thought was so fascinating, really beautifully and strongly written and so intelligent and gave me so many interesting things to, to think about, which I'm still sort of pondering. But, but as a story as a whole, I think it just didn't entirely work and come together for me or, or didn't give me as much story as as I wanted to even though you know it does have a plot line and and story to it but yeah just as as a whole um, I, I wish it was more about the characters and then with light perpetual I thought it was a really interesting concept and and one that you can really think about um, from different angles but the story itself when it got into you know the meat of each character's story just some of the stories worked better than others for me and and uh, so yeah just wasn't entirely balanced in the way that I, I would hope a, a novel about this range of characters would be. And then with A Town Called Solace, I, I thought it was a really strong and interesting novel, but um, but it's, it was a very self-contained story and I felt just didn't have really the ambition or scale that I would look for sort of like in a prize winning book. I mean, you can think about this this story of family life and that it's, it's in some ways a very like small self-contained story in a particular historical period but but that um, and there are really interesting things that come out about that about universal things to do with family and and what makes family units connect or or disconnect and but um, but yeah as as a whole it just didn't um, I, it didn't entirely move me and I don't think it'll last with me as long as some of these other novels will and so then it comes down to these seven novels for me and between these seven I would have real trouble picking six 
for a, a short list. And I, yeah, I think they're individually all really strong and great and like deserving of a place on, on a prize list. I mean, part of me would love to see an island on the short list just because it comes from a smaller press and, and so it's like less well known than the other writers. But, uh, but then, but if I had to go on like each individual novel and how powerful I think they are, I would probably take that off and I would say these six novels um, should be on the short list. But of course, that's just my own point of view and, uh, and the judges might have very different feelings about it. And out of these six, I would say that Bewilderment, The Promise, and Claire and the Sun are the strongest novels. And I think it'll be a interesting different thing about this year's shortlist that it will probably be very male author dominated and I think that's just a sort of coincidence of what books happen to be submitted and chosen um, for this year's long list. I mean as I talked about in my predictions video for the, the long list, there were certainly several other novels uh, by female authors that I thought were incredibly strong and should have been on this year's shortlist. And there's a siren going by. So um, so hopefully that's not too distracting. But yeah, I, I, I think it's just a sort of coincidence that that's the way it worked out from the books that are listed this year, that it will probably be more dominated by, by male authors. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe um, An Island will be on the short list and we'll get a sort of even balance of the authors. Or maybe it'll be something completely different. Who knows? That's that's how it works out. And and I, I just think it's a sort of interesting thing that um, out of prize lists, it, it brings out these larger discussions about what's being published and, and what points of view we're getting and what points of view we're not getting. And I think it's interesting to remark on that and see what's happening uh, overall over time in publishing. But really, it's about the strength of individual novels and whether those novels succeeded or failed in what the authors were trying to do. So those are my thoughts about the long list and what I think will make the short list. Of course, I would love to know your thoughts about what you think will be on the shortlist, or if you're still interested in reading any of these books from the, the long list. And I guess we'll see on September 14th what is on the actual shortlist. So thank you for continuing to follow me in this journey. I'm, I'm sure there'll be more videos to come. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.